Hey guys, how you doing? Today we're going to take a look at the uh, Kaiser Gemini. Right here. It's actually designed by a fellow by the name of Ray Laconico. It is a manual action frame lock. Very nice action. I might add. Now, it is kind of drop shuttable. Let's see. If you kind of shake it, yeah. So sorta, of. we'll call it partial drop shuttable. I'm sure that that will probably improve with use. Now, Kaiser used CPM S35 VN as the blade steel. Excellent choice. As you can see, it is a uh, flipper that enables that lightning fast deployment. Look at that. Now the flipper is actually the only means of deployment, so unfortunately there is really no slow opening this guy. It's kind of all or nothing. Now that blade is actually riding on uh, ceramic ball bearings. You can adjust the action. Looks like just on the one side with the number eight torques. Now the blade is uh, stonewash finished with a plain edge that's flat ground drop point. The length of the blade is 3.125. So it is just kind of a little guy. And the cutting edge is the very same, 3.125 inches. The blade thickness is about 0 0.12 inches or three millimeters thick with a, a blade width at the widest point comes to one inches. Now the spine, the handle, the uh, spine of the handle actually is 0 0.44 inches thick. Now in the closed position, again at the widest point, this is going to take up about 1.2 inches in your pocket across. So that's pretty good. Overall, you're looking at seven and a quarter inches long. The scales are made of that, well, contoured titanium. Very nice, stone washed. Now, let's look at the spine. So you can see open construction, so no problems there for when it comes time to clean it out. The weight, oh, I can't wait to show you guys this. The weight of this guy Three point eight. Actually, I thought it was a little less than that. Let's see. Yes, three point six. Three point six ounces, or ah, roughly four AA batteries. Weigh the same as the Gemini. Also, excellent. pocket clip. Nice blue anodization. Unfortunately, it is not a deep carry clip, which kind of stinks. Not a big fan of the clip overall anyway. It just doesn't, uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like, it looks like it belongs on another knife, not this one. Now you may have noticed there is absolutely zero jimping on this, not even on the flipper. Nope. 
Now, I'm willing to bet the centering on this is probably pretty darn good. Let's see. If not perfect. Oh yeah, very nice. Well centered. The detent is perfect. No way I can shake this guy open. And it requires zero wrist flick as far as deployment goes, which is also a sign of a good detent. Now there is an over travel stop for the frame lock. I don't know if you guys can see that there through the scales. And yes, the relief cut is external. And there is a lock bar insert in here. which is nice. So it's not that titanium rubbing up against the blade. There is an external stop pin. So you guys can see that. Decent size considering this is a smaller knife. So that stop pin really does not need to be too thick anyway. Now, when the Gemini locks up, it's at about 50% lock up, which is great. There is a lanyard hole. Yeah, decent size. Yeah, it looks like paracord will fit through there. Price. There really is not, I have not seen much of a variation in price, you know, from retailer to retailer. They are all selling this for $170 out the door. So 170, which is it a little steep? Yes, it's a lot, but you are getting a, a, one fantastic knife. You really are. Now let's talk about some pros and cons. Because, unfortunately, there are some. Let's start with the good stuff. The weight. What did we say, 3.6 ounces? That's nothing, that is nothing. The scales. These contoured scales, look at that. You don't see that every day. Very nice. That, you know, of course, is going to attribute to the higher cost as well. I mean, anytime you have the rounded contoured scales, that's going to up the price a little bit. Now, I do like the touch of color, the touch of blue that they've added here on the pivot and the two body screws. Oh, and the backspacer, which is, by the way, also titanium. Again, not something that you see every day. So I, I do, I like the blue. Now, as you all know, I am left-handed, which means when I deploy a flipper knife, my thumb just kind of instinctively rests on the frame lock. That is not a problem for the Kaiser Gemini because even with my thumb there, you can see it still rockets open. Well done. Now the pivot screw is actually tightened completely. Yes, another sign of a very, very well-made knife. Whenever the pivot is completely wrenched down, yet still retains that silky smooth opening. Look at that. 
I, I could flip this friggin' thing all day long. You know how there's just, there's just some of those knives that, I don't know, that are more for, more fun than others to fondle. And this would be one of those. What I don't like, ah, I really do hate this part. Now, for me, this knife is a little on the small side. And let me bring in a couple knives for comparison so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Kershaw Cryo 2, which actually, yeah, that's pretty darn close. That's almost the same size as the Gemini. Uh, what else? Let's bring in the Parrot 2, PM2, and one more. I don't know if we're going to fit this in here. The Spyderco Manix 2. So that should uh, put the size in perspective for you. It is on the small side. For me but you know I tend to like larger knives we already talked a little bit about the pocket clip and how it is well really kind of the knife rides kind of high too high for me in the pocket And not to mention that this clip looks like it belongs on a different knife, not this one. Not a big fan of it. Now, Kaiser, if you are watching this, can you guys please, please, please stop putting these darn stickers on the blade? Made in China, yes, we know, we get it. But is this sticker on the blade really necessary? Because you know what's gonna happen as soon as I peel this off, there's gonna be that sticky residue left over and then I gotta work on that. So please, 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 just stop with the stickers. Unless it's a scratch and sniff. Wait, is it? No. Just stop doing it. Uh, you might also notice the absence of a sharpening choil. Yeah, that's going to be a little tough to get in there, up to the flipper, when it does come time for sharpening. Now, overall, I do highly recommend this knife. For me, it's a little small. Gosh, if this was just, you know what, like a quarter of an inch bigger, oh my gosh, I would be in heaven. But unfortunately, it's just a little too teeny for me. But do not Don't, do not let that stop you from purchasing this knife because it really, it really is beautiful. I want to thank you guys for uh, stopping by today. Thank you so much. And you know what? If you liked what you saw today, uh, please leave a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more, then just go ahead and subscribe. Yeah, just do it. So thanks again, guys, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care.